This is the Fitness Fest podcast, highlighting health and fitness professionals across the globe and giving you the tools for growth. Let's start the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Fitness Fest podcast. My name is Tyler Valencia. I'm the president of KIPS, and today I am your host on the Fitness Fest podcast. We have a great educator today with us to talk about education, personal training, research, all kinds of areas that hopefully expand upon the goal of this podcast to really give fitness professionals an idea of what's out there. What can I do if I'm just entering the industry? What are my options? So today we have Dr. Len Kravitz. He is currently in New Mexico. He is a professor out there and just a great person in terms of his ability to give back to the industry, what he does for research, what he does with mentoring students, so many great things. So first, Dr. Kravitz, thank you for coming on the podcast. It's wonderful to be with you today. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, for those of you out there that are getting into the industry, here is somebody that has really laid the found work for some of the things that we do as personal trainers, as fitness professionals in the research realm. Dr. Kravitz, would you mind by just giving us a little background on yourself, how you got to um, education, the University of New Mexico, even just kind of your start in the industry? Oh, absolutely. Well, I, I was at a stage of my career after my bachelor's degree, which was was, was in health and recreation, where um, I, I needed some career direction. And for me, the career direction was education. So at that time, I was coaching gymnastics from my gymnastics uh, background, and I took on a, a graduate assistantship at San Jose State coaching gymnastics to the women's gymnastics program. And I chose to get a, a master's in physical education. And then jumping forward to doing my master's thesis, I wanted to do a flexibility study and I wanted a really big population sample. And the only classes with really big population samples, you know, at that time were the dance aerobic classes. And so the department chair said, well, if you can learn how to teach aerobics over the summer, I'll give you a dance aerobics class and you can use them as, you know, a, a class and as your for your study. And I jumped on it. I took the whole summer. I took every type of class you can imagine, watch videos. I was like a fanatic <clears throat> learning, you know, how to teach aerobics. Now, you know, I had the science, you know, in my master's program. So I understood the physiology but I didn't know anything about teaching, cueing, organizing, choreography or anything. But by that first day of class, I was ready. I loved it. I taught the class, did my uh, study, got my thesis. And that was the turning point. I said, you know what? This is where I want to be, teaching group exercise. My first thing was teaching group exercise. And you, you know what's funny, Tyler? As soon as I got my master's, it, it shows what a degree is. I started applying for a lot of fitness director positions. And, you know, I w had so many great offers, but I wanted to stay in the Bay, Bay Area. And so I took an offer at, at the Los Gatos Athletic Club. But I think the message was when I was applying for positions with a master's, it made a difference. People were interested. They very, very much wanted, you know, to interview me. And it, it was also a real green light flag to me, that education makes a difference when it comes to getting a profession. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You hit, you hit on so many good things there. And I got to go take one step back because I'm actually at a certain point where uh, with my dissertation uh, for our listeners, I'm working on a PhD in health and human performance. And it's a real thing. You know, if you are doing a dissertation on uh, where you're going to need subjects, you're going to need people to be a part of it. That is one, probably one of the hardest parts. And you might have to alter your, um, you know, what you're, you're studying or what you're looking at for uh, your dissertation. And yet you actually gave me some great advice uh, to give a little shout out to our host, the Fitness, Fed, uh, Fitness Fest and the, um, the Fitness Fest that they do out here in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, last April, I had the chance to meet you. You were actually on your way to uh, one of your presentations. And we talked, we chatted a little bit about, uh, you know, who I am and uh, what I'm doing with my PhD. And you said, you know, really just get something done, get something done yeah. because you don't want to be held up. And, and I just had this conversation last night 
with a classmate of mine and he was saying the same thing. So what a great thing that you had. You, you were able to find a population and have a relevant population size in terms of uh, getting that process rolling for you. So that's my first thing I wanted to go to. But second, you hit on really, um, you know, what we want to provide with this podcast is, uh, you know, showing the different options out there, but how well education integrates into our profession. As you get more education, how many more doors open up for you? And you, you know, you, you're showing it right now. You're tell, talking about it, how education helped you get into, um, a, you know, a director position. And really, you know, that's something where a lot of entry level trainers, they get their certification, they get their bachelor's or whatever that might be. And they're okay, well, where do I go next? But at least you have that foundation at, at, with education. You know, I really agree. And, and you know, you, you have to be at a good place in your life where you can do it. And, and I know a lot of personal trainers, great, great friends of mine, you know, have pretty busy family obligations and, and they're, they're uh, laser focused on being the best personal trainer in the world in working with their clients. But there, there are a lot of personal trainers out there who we both know have bachelor's degrees. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you could find a way, and of course, uh, uh, hopefully a university in your area, it, it, it really is one wonderful venue. You know, and most of us, you know, have done all the certifications, but, you know, the, the college education first step, you know, after the bachelor's, master's, you know, can make a real difference, you know, in, for some careers. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I, I have to... Um, you know, share with you, you know, for us, you know, for, for me, the PhD, the reason I went for my PhD is I really loved exercise so much. I wanted to research it. Mm -hmm. And if you want to be able to research it, you have to get a PhD because then you can really, you know, work at a university where you can actually do the studies. And for many personal trainers, in reality, if the college degree doesn't fit because of the family and, you know, the other responsibilities, uh, I really feel specialized certifications are wonderful. You know, in my travels, I meet some incredible personal trainers. And when they tell me all of their specialties, you know, that they've been certified on, you know, I'm, I'm so tremendously impressed because, you know, some of these certifications right now are so wonderful yeah, and, and they're just career boosting. So, you know, if the college degree isn't going to fit, definitely, definitely go for specialty certifications. And then that allows you to possibly teach a new class, do a new type of program, maybe, you know, do some new testing depending on the certification. But it mm -hmm. really still opens many doors. And I would highly encourage you know, my, my colleague professionals to always keep improving themselves in, in that capacity. A hundred percent agree with that. And I mean, even just thinking about in terms of if you're going to get a second specialty certification, let's say, for example, since uh, you had mentioned that you have done group exercise in the past, I've taught yep. group exercise in the past, and I will, you know, I'll tell people, listeners, anybody that my master's emphasis is in sport performance, but I have no problem at all teaching group exercise, um, a boot camp format where, you know, it's a, a wide variety of populations. But if you think about it in terms of the business of it, where are you going to get the opportunity to instruct, you know, 15, 20 different people at one time? And if you're doing personal training on the side, here's an opportunity to showcase your skill set and potentially get more clients after that. You're just getting your name out there more, being able to show a wider a variety of your skills. So, you know, really taking that next step after you get that entry level certification, jumping into a specialty certification, it just you know, kind of the theme that we've gone with so far is just opening up more doors for yourself, being able to expand your knowledge, be able to do more. And even though sometimes you might be, in, we'll say in the sports performance realm, you might have the ability to jump into extra, extra uh, sorry, group it group exercise, group fitness, and that's all done through education right there. So um, to kind of expand on where uh, you, so you're in San Jose, uh, you got a director position and how did you kind of, how did you move over to the University of New Mexico? Well, that's a great question. I worked for 10 years, actually, maybe it was uh, maybe 12 years 
it as a director of the Las Gatas Athletic Club, loved it. And what happened is I, along the way, took on a part-time teaching job at San Jose State University as they needed someone to start teaching group X and um, some other just activity classes at the university. Mm -hmm. And so I was kind of doing both jobs at the time. Well, one was full-time and the other one was, you know, just part-time. And then I, I actually ended up segueing to San Jose State because I just loved working at, in the college. It was just time for me to move on. Mm -hmm. And the college, you know, opportunity, you know, of teaching, you know, multiple classes in different um, um, college ed activity classes and some um, simple lecture classes really excited me. And I, I knew right away, if you want to teach at the university, you have to have a PhD because then you could really, you know, not only teach the upper level classes, but do the research. And, you know, I looked at a lot of programs and at the time, Albuquerque, what I, where I was from, had a wonderful program in health health performance and exercise science, a, mm. a dual degree. And I said, whoa, that's exactly what I want. Because I knew I wanted the exercise physiology, but I also wanted the health promotion mm -hmm. because I knew how important it was. And, you know, you apply to a program, get accepted. And then, of course, you know, Tyler, a PhD nowadays, about three or four years, three and a half to four years, depending on, you know, the program. But it was worth every moment what was yeah. so interesting is, you, you, you know, you really realize when you have the PhD, you start applying for jobs. I couldn't believe how many different interviews I had, you, you know, because the degree does make a difference when you're applying for positions. It, it's a big factor. And, and my first job was at Ole Miss. It was a wonderful, wonderful program. But the, the area wasn't for me. And then what happened is... My uh, after three years at Ole Miss, my mentor at UNM was retiring, and she really wanted me to take over the program here. Mm -hmm. So as she retired, I applied for her position and got it. And I've been there now twenty years here at wow. UNM, and wow, I love it, love it. That's great. That's a really great story there, and uh, something that uh, kind of want to expand on there because I know that I've had my my fair share of mentors within the industry, and yeah. Uh, briefly touched on there that you had a mentor. Can you kind of share on uh, your how you found your mentor and kind of, um, you know, some of the advice that they've given you throughout the years? Yeah. And, and, you know, mentors are everything. We all need mentors. And sometimes you have to go out and reach out to get that mentor before, you know, it happens. And I immediately at UNM saw some incredible you know, professors, and one in particular, my particular mentor, Dr. Vivian Hayward, who was doing incredible research, incredible teaching. And typically, you know, in a university, if, you know, I don't know any other way of doing it, but if you want a mentor, you take their classes, you ask if you could be part of their research team. And then, you know, after I did a really good job in class, Dr. Hayward asked me if I would help her with the class, be like a, a teaching assistant. And then, you know, that the mentorship grew and as she was my dissertation uh, chair and still still is a wonderful mentor. But to all personal trainers out there, my, my biggest suggestion is we all see some people and, and other trainers out there that are doing things that we want to do. You know, one of the greatest things you can do is, you know, invite them to lunch and just talk about their own career. People love to talk about themselves and really get to know their story because everybody has a story. And then, you know, it's very easy for you to say sometimes, you know, I would love to just tap into, you know, how you became such a, a specialty personal trainer with, you know, whatever population you are. And people are wonderfully, wonderfully willing to share as long as you, you, you're, you're just so professionally courteous, courteous uh, so, so that you show that you care about their time and that you're not trying to be too demanding. You know, it's kind of amazing, mm -hmm. you know, with mentorships, when, when people feel very, very comfortable and, uh, w with you, you know, how much they're willing to help you along in your career. And, and, you know, I know you've had some probably great mentors in, in your college career right now as well. A hundred percent agree with um, the willingness to give back. And that's really something that I've seen as I've grown my, I'll say, business. And some of the mentors that I've had have been in 
kind of the business realm. And, um, you know, one of the mentors I, I have is somebody that um, he runs a very large uh, <laughs> business. I don't want to drop his name. I don't want to uh, for him to get any extra you know, request to be a mentor, but uh, he runs a very large global business. You know, sometimes he's in, you know, five to eight different countries at, at a time. But if I shoot him a text message and I say, hey, you know, I have something with business that uh, it's kind of, you know, mess with me. Can I, you have a, you know, a time to chat? He'll say, he will immediately say, yeah, just give me a call. And it always amazes me. You know, this is somebody that flies across the globe, has to deal with different language barriers, is a very busy, busy man. And he will no problem. Drop that to help me with my business. And, you know, I'm small time compared to what he's doing. And it's great, you know, to see that people that have, you know, gone through uh, different things in life, their experience are always willing to share those. And I, I've seen that in the fitness setting too. personal trainers that have been established at certain health clubs, gyms, whether they've been there for five, 10 years, or even just a couple of years, they're willing to share because they know that ultimately, it's not a competition between me and you to get, you know, more business. They know that's going to help the overall business, the quality of personal training that's available to the members and also the reputation of that staff. If people know that, oh, wow, this club has great trainers. They're always willing to help. They give great advice. They're going to refer more people to you. So it only helps in the long run there. And I, I think that that's a mindset that, uh, you might hear initially getting to the industry that it's very um, hunger game. It's very, uh, you know, me versus you. But really, great trainers have no problem sharing advice because uh, they've seen it and they don't want other people to make that mistake. And so that's it's great to see, you know, that how you had a mentor and how it impacted you and, you know, the willingness to give, you know, give advice for them. And, you know, really, you know, with your position now at the, you know, the head of um, UNM in the exercise science department. Uh, do you have any kind of, can you share with, with the listeners right now, like what type of uh, projects and uh, research that you're working on? Well, absolutely. And, and, you know, right now I feel like I am 100% or maybe 150% mentor to my students, undergrad and grad. And, and, to me, it's 100% giving back mm -hmm. because, you know, all of the undergrads that I, I teach and, and advise right now want to go into physical therapy, occupational therapy, medicine, personal training. And, and you know, they, they always meet with me. I, you know, I'm in charge of the program. So we're constantly always meeting each semester. And, you know, it, 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 mentoring is, is just such an important aspect of who we are. Mm -hmm. And then the, the doctoral students you know, they want to be the next wave of researchers. And right now I'm working with several incredible doctoral students. There, there are many different ways of exercising that we haven't really researched. Combination of exercises, mm -hmm. um, something as simple as the intuitive. We've already done a research study on this and we're going to publish it on, you know, circuit training when you go from upper body to lower body and upper body to lower body. It's, it actually is called like peripheral heart action training. And just in a nutshell, there, there's never been any research on this type of training, how effective it is, how good it is for your heart, how good it is for the musculoskeletal system, how good it is for the uh, nervous system. And so we just finished the study and it is extremely good. We found it to be incredibly good for, you know, all systems of the human body. And now we're going to send it to a really premier journal to get published. But something as simple, it's been around since the 1940s, wow. the idea of upper body, lower body, and not one study published, you know, on this topic. Wow. And, and then there, there's a few other really unique training techniques and so right now I've got some great graduate students who are very interested in this. And so we're taking on some of these training techniques. And what, what, what we typically do is we, we try to pilot it first mm -hmm. to see if, you know, pilot you'll do with, you know, maybe basically a pilot study you always do with just the grad students themselves. Mm -hmm. And we see if the data suggests that this, there is something promising and then you have to do several, you know, tweaking and modification. Like we found that when you do upper body, lower body, it's much better if you do more compound exercises as opposed to single joint exercises. Mm -hmm. So that helped us design the study. 
But we're going to continue doing, you know, all these really applied training studies, you know, um, so that we can really advance the industry to the next level. You know, that that's really my goal right now. That's great. That's really great stuff right there. And with, you know, having helped, I can't even, can you share with us, how many students have you helped in the research process? Do you know that number? Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> well, well, you know, when you go up, uh, you know, as far as the research, you know, as far as the research, you know, I would say, you know, uh, doctoral students, at least, you know, 200 wow. solid that, that have worked with me. You know, and but I've you know been at UNM for twenty years now. But even at the, before that, at Ole Miss, and, and you know that's a lot, as you well know. Yes. You know, in a program, that, that's a lot. But what's so interesting is the first thing I always try to do with them, you know, before we do a study, is get them to write, you know, an article, mm -hmm. and you know, for Idea Fitness Journal, ACSM Health and Fitness Journal, because most people don't know how to write like for, you know, a professional journal mm -hmm. and, and it's a really good skill. And, and, you know, for the listeners, I was going to suggest, you know, my first article I wrote was for shape magazine. Mm. You know, this is many, many years ago and, and it was one of the most exciting, you know, experiences I ever had. And, and a lot of people are, are very afraid to write for the big magazines. But what I would suggest is, is, Maybe if, you're, if your writing skills you feel are okay, co-author it with a medical doctor, a physical therapist, someone who has, you know, a degree. Because nowadays, most of these, you know, you know, trade magazines like Shape and, you know, all, all the self and the different magazines, you know, you know, they really would like to have someone with some type of professional credibility. And a lot of times, like a podiatrist, knows everything about the foot, but they don't know anything about, you know, the exercising foot, you know, what mm -hmm. a personal trainer knows. And so the combination of, if any of the personal trainers out there have some professional colleagues, you know, whether, you know, they're, they're uh, physical therapists, even, even those that, you know, that you go to as a practitioner, a medical doctor, you know, invite them to do an article, you know, on something that you feel really comfortable about. Because, you, you, you know, Tyler, th these trade magazines are just wanting articles, articles, articles. And, you, you know, if you if you read one of these journals, you, you see what they're, they're writing about. And, and, you know, you and I years ago, Shape was almost, you know, they were the leader. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to publish in Shape magazine because they were the leader, you know, in... in you know, fitness education for, for the consumer. And I think that I would really encourage people to try, you know, it, you, you basically, you know, you write the article, you submit it to the, um, the, um, the, the it's kind of the, it's called the managing editor of the journal. They, they kind of like route everything, you know, to the particular areas, mm -hmm. but they're the ones who, who, who first receive an article and say, yeah, we're very interested in this particular article. Sometimes if you want to, Tyler, what, what the, 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 um, our, our colleague, professional colleagues can do is you'd have a really good idea on an article, say like for this, you know, this peripheral heart action training now. It's ready for a perfect time to send it to a, a professional uh, trade magazine. I'll, I'll send the the, the, um, the managing editor just a, a little query, basically telling them, you know, this is what we do. This is the program. It works not only as a good workout, but now we've got some data on this. And it's an incredibly great workout would you be interested in sharing this with your readers? Mm -hmm. You know, and then you, you say a little bit about yourself. A and for some of the personal trainers out there, if they could co-author, they could say, well, I'm a personal trainer for 15 years, but I'm also going to co-author this with, you know, my medical practitioner to make sure that, that the science is 100% authentic. And th they'd be surprised because, you know, most personal trainers I meet, you know, in my travels share with me some incredibly great ideas of programs they're doing. And I said, you should get that out there. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I think you, you hit on two big things with in terms of, you know, trainers. I've gotten questions like this before is how do I get onto the speaking circuit? And then we'll come back to, you know, your experiences with the speaking circuit. But right here, here is the segue to build a relationship with potentially Idea, Fitness Fest, or any of the other um, you know, organizations out there. So you can build some credibility within yourself 
if you're authoring or if you're pro providing yeah. them with content for free, of course, there's that initial investment from yourself, your time, your research and what you're writing to give them. And, you know, they're probably not going to comp you for it, but it's off, you know, this is your segue to potentially getting on the speaking circuit, being able to, um, you know, get to that next step if that's what you're looking for. So um, that's a great piece of advice right there for many fitness professionals. I can't tell you how many times people ask me, you know, they'll see that I, you know, this year I didn't, I probably didn't do as many as you, but I did, I think five different um, conferences and I got, one coming, fabulous. I got one coming up this weekend and it's really, you know, my route was different than other people, but you know, some trainers they're in that, uh, okay, I teach, uh, you know, at five different locations, but I'm looking for that next step. What, how do I get there? And really it's building those relationships with the, the conferences, the managing editor or somebody within that organi organization that they can vouch for you that gives you that leg up because they get probably, uh, you know, hundreds of applications to speak. And if you have that leg up, you know, they see on there that you've written content for them or if you wrote content for a different conference, you know, here's that little piece of, um, you know, uh, variety that gives you that leg up. So really great uh, piece of advice right there, because I, sometimes it's just putting yourself out there. And I think that that's also part yeah. of, um, you know, the issue holding some people back with, you know, providing content. And as a business owner myself, I can speak to it that content is, you know, something that all all companies are looking for, whether it's a company that I yep. own or it's, um, you know, club industry or it's club solutions or it's idea or it's fitness fest, you know, they're all looking for content to be able to market to their, um, their audience. So really take that step, personal trainers, take that step, write something, put something together and, you know, ask your peers too to read it, give advice back and see the language of it. Or if it needs, you know, some type of references, whatever that might be, Take those steps because it could have a big payoff in the end. Um, with you, Dr. Kravitz, what um, when you started on the speaking circuit, what was kind of, um, you know, let's just start off asking, like, what was kind of uh, the lay of the land of the industry? I'm sure that you've done, you know, countless uh, conferences. What did it, what was, what were conferences like? And, um, you know, how, how have you seen that expansion? Well, you know, that's an incredible question. For me, you know, I was kind of, you know, I'm a pioneer. So, you know, I was at the, the, the very beginning of our industry. And what happened is, you know, I do, I, I was at the first idea conference. Wow. And, you know, um, they, they had a, a, a little, you know, they've got the beautiful journal now, but they had kind of a little kind of a flyer, you know, where all of us, you know, were kind of reading about idea and we knew of the organization. And so word on the street with all the, personal trainers in group X, you know, this many years ago said they're going to have their first, you know, conference, you know, in the early eighties mm -hmm. and they were looking for presenters. And so I said, man, I want a chance to present. And, you know, in, in their advertisement, they said, we're looking for presenters that are doing unique type of classes, mm -hmm. you know, and at that time, you know, I had, you know, I was, you know, like a lot of the people listening to this podcast teach a lot of you really great classes you know, and, and so I was doing, you know, some, you know, at that time, um, you know, for instance, you, you know, I developed, you know, a teaching group X class that attracted men into the class. Mm. Cause you know, when it first started, it was, you know, all, you know, 90, 95% women in the classes. Mm -hmm. And so I developed a class, a little less dancey, a little bit more boot camp, boot camp style. And so, you know, the first class, you know, um, presentation I had for idea was, you know, I forgot the exact title, but, you know, teaching group to attract men into the class. And they immediately wanted me to teach that because they saw that that's a tremendous growth area that they wanted to see in the industry. And I, I think what happened is, you know, we all love teaching, but there is a, a, a real special, special um, accomplishment when you're able to teach your peers, your colleagues, your fellow, you know, personal trainers and group X and to have that honor was something, you know, early on in my career, I said, well, I want to keep doing this because this is a tremendous honor. And I feel like I can contribute not just, you know, to um, my peers, but to the industry itself, because I want the industry to, to you know, grow and, and become even a stronger industry. 
And so that was the kickoff for me. And then, you know, I've always let, for me, science drive my presentations. So that, that my, my, um, my calling card is, you know, everything that I teach when I was doing Group X became science driven. And then now, you know, I do 100% lectures and it's all science driven. But, but early on, I let my classes that I taught at, at conferences, like, you know, with high intensity interval training was something I taught early on in my career. You know, I let the science drive the class so that, that it had some, some type of evidence to support it. Mm-hmm. And one, I'm a hundred percent. I love that kind of stuff, letting science drive it. And, you know, with, you know, conference in general, and I know that we keep coming back and forth with you know, ways for trainers to expand their knowledge within the industry. Here's an opportunity. If you're unsure about, okay, what step do I take? What kind of niche? What do I want to teach? Or what kind of populations do I want to start training? A conference offers you that ability. Not only do you have a wide variety of topics, but now you're with your peers too other professionals that are in the same boat or that want to experience, you know, different, you know, modalities, training experiences, get up to date on certain research topics. Here's that opportunity for you. I know that I, I, I'll admit it. I did not take advantage of this when I was a undergraduate at Cal state Long Beach. And, you know, my, um, the head of my program is somebody that you're, uh, that you're close with, uh, Dr. Schroeder and, Absolutely. And she always always had these opportunities for students and I didn't take advantage of it. And I know, you know, being a part of these conferences now, you know, what the opportunity is for fitness professionals, whether, you know, you're in college or you are a entry level trainer, you get that opportunity to see these different um, modalities and potentially, you know, expand on those in the future. You can get a little taste of it, take about an hour, hour and a half lecture on it. And then, oh, I want to get more on that. Here is that. Where can I get more information on the specialty certification for this or dive more into that topic? And that's what conferences can really do for many, many fitness professionals out there. You know, every fitness conference has about 100 plus presenters, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Or it depends on the size of of the conference. But Conference hosts are always looking for new ideas and, you know, presenters that have something new to share. And I know there are so many people I see in my travels that have such incredible creativity and, you know, they need to take that bigger step and and say, look, I've got something, you know, polish it a little bit more for your peers. Mm -hmm. And then pretty much now, all conferences select presenters. You have to send in a video, you, you know, as you know, yet, and you have to do, you know, just a simple video, uh, you know, on on your mobile device, and so they can see your, your the class you're teaching. Mm-hmm. And you never know unless you step out and give it a try. Yep, yep. And uh, you know, if professionals out there that are trying to get into the circuit, um, you know, taking those steps to record yourself, you know, show your topic, um, but it could be, you know, something that if you get selected to be a part of a circuit or uh, be a regular presenter, you know, that's a little extra cash in your pocket a month. And that's something that I know all fitness professionals do not mind, do not mind a little extra cash. So (laughs) (laughs) absolutely with uh, yourself, Dr. Kravitz. So what uh, are the current topics that you're speaking on? You you know, I I really have, I I always use the term with all my students, laser focused, Mm -hmm. Um, without a doubt, overweight, obesity, fat loss, calorie expenditure is everything. And so much of the research I do is ways to improve, you know, the body's ability to burn calories. As you know, mm-hmm. 68% of our population is overweight, yep. obese right now. And we, we need time efficient training programs, you know, that, that really can help people. And so laser focusing on that category, another big laser focus, you know, is, is getting people moving more. We, we know that you just can't start them exercising. you got to get them moving more and, and ways of adding, you know, physical activity into the daily life so people aren't so sedentary. Mm-hmm. 
And, and without a doubt, I'm definitely into muscle. And, and we, we can do every type of muscle research at my university from the cellular level to applied level. So without a doubt, you know, all the different resistance training programs and ways to either develop strength or hypertrophy, you know, for, for either performance or just for good health is a big area of research that I'm, I'm doing as well as, as presenting on. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, you, you probably know me, most people know me very well because almost at every conference I'll do a high intensity interval training, you know, lecture on, on all of the different research right now. Probably the most studied type of exercise program in the world as far as research yeah is high intensity interval training. And I try to keep up with the research so that I can keep presenting updates, you know, at the conferences. So it's that that's pretty much my agenda right wow. now. Wow. And you know, you, you see how, you know, even how the industry has kind of, you know, played a factor in that. You know, you want to keep up to date with your presentations, your research, and you know, that's kind of the trend of the industry is the high intensity interval training, but uh, something that I kind of want to take uh, little time on because it's uh, important to talk about with, um, you know, our audience and that you, you just hit on was, you know, getting people moving, getting people exercising, because as personal trainers, we often forget, you know, the, I'll call it the mental wellness or the capacity for individuals with change with um, starting an exercise program. And as fitness professionals, you know, that's our life. We wake up, we breathe exercise, we want to learn more about it, and it's just natural for us. But the rest of the population, as you touched on with the percentage, the 68% of individuals, it's not as exciting for them. It's not something that they want to wake up, they want to do. And as fitness professionals, you know, we have to really, you know, be able to empathize, but also be able to come up with strategies to bring up, you know, tough, tough subjects with them. And this is, again, where education comes in. How can I learn more about the human mind and be able to progress my clients safely, but also mentally get them there so that they create these patterns of change, positive change, and be able to make healthier, you know, uh, choices moving forward? You know, you're, you're really right. Uh, w without a doubt, you know, all, all the new research on exercise in the brain shows that even leisure time movement, you know, just that type of, of movement is is so wonderfully important, you know, for, for, for the mind, for cognition. Mm -hmm. And most of us right now, you know, we, we see a client, you know, when you train them once or twice, maybe three times a week. And so what are they doing the rest of the time? And it's not that they need to be exercising. They really just need to be moving and moving and moving. And that really is the key right now, non-exercise ex activity thermogenesis or, or NEAT, as I think you're, you're pretty mm -hmm. familiar with. Um, the greatest researcher is in your area. The, 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 the Phoenix area ha has some uh, you know, tremendous research mm -hmm. you know, on, on just leisure, how important moving. You know, all the new research shows you know, that if every 30 minutes you just get up and move, you know, it, it can be very, very beneficial in preventing the onset of, you know, insulin resistance. You know, it can be, you know, very, very beneficial in keeping your cholesterol down. But, you know, a lot of people, you know, especially at, you know, um, sedentary style jobs, sit for four hours, go to lunch, then sit for another four yeah. hours and then go home, you know, and, and really, you know, as personal trainers, you know, we, we, we all need to get our clients moving regularly. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, the one thing that, you know, that all the new research shows is brisk is better, moving brisk. So always, you know, in your daily life, walk with a, a faster, brisk pace, because it's not only good for your brain, it's good for your heart, yeah. too. So, you know, it's a really important tip. Oh, yeah, that's good stuff right there. And, uh, you know, this is the whole podcast today or, or this episode has you know been a wealth of knowledge i hope for all our listeners and really opened up um you know their eyes to opportunities out there you know i know that we talked about research we talked about the speaking circuit we talked about the education side and you know the opportunities provided to them and i really have to emphasize emphasize that you know this is the goal of the podcast right here um you know being able to provide this information for the students before we 
uh, you know, sign off, Dr. Kravitz. Can you give some information about yourself? I know you're not big on the, the whole so social media, but uh, upcoming lectures for yourself, presentations um, that, you know, our, our listeners can see you at. Sure. Well, you know, and, and first, you know, uh, on Amazon, you know, I've got a new Hit Your Limit new book out. And why I, I'm going to recommend that is the book really would be great for many of the personal trainers to recommend to their clients. It really talks about how to be successful in fitness. And then I've got 50 different hit workouts in there. The trainers will love it because there's, you know, enough workouts to keep you busy for a long time. And, and you know, that, that, that is kind of, you know, my newest publication. And then I pretty much like to do all the idea events, all the SEW events. I like to do Fitness Fest with Janice. She's so progressive. And, you know, uh, in our, our industry right now, I also enjoy, you know, once a year, ACSM has their health and fitness conference. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I pretty much like to publish in, you know, Idea Fitness Journal, in ACSM Health and Fitness Journal. Those are the two target for, for the professional journals that, that I really like writing for. And, and uh, I like to focus, you know, my grad students into getting their first professional journal because those are both peer reviewed journals so that they really have a, you know, a real high quality to them. Yeah, And for our listeners out there, I did a quick search while uh, Dr. Kravitz was talking about this. So that, that book on Amazon hit your limit, high intensity interval training for fat loss, cardio and full body health. First edition is available on there. For paperback, eleven forty nine, and it's available for Prime, free one day. Check it out, guys. Okay, remember, I'll, we'll make sure to put some type of link in there so that you guys can uh, get a quicker um, view on it. But uh, they offer it on here in paperback and on Kindle, so you can even get it immediately right there. That's awesome. There we, wow. there we go. There we go. Well, Doctor Kravitz, I got to say again, thank you so much for coming on uh, the Fitness Fest podcast. It's been a real treat for me as. Uh, someone that works on the education side, being able to connect with you on this, provide valuable information for the learners. And we'll, uh, uh, you know, we'll see where this goes for the learners. And hopefully, you know, they see, wow, so many more opportunities out there for me. Yeah. And I hope everyone that comes up to Fitness Fest and says hi to you. I know you and I will catch up <laughs> this coming year. So it, it's time to start networking yes. with each other. That's for sure. Agreed. 